congratulate you and the rest of the media on getting Obama elected. If your point is that perhaps Barack Obama is in for a new world order, I think you are correct. Mr. Huxley has recently returned from a conference where the discussion focused on the development of new techniques by which to control and direct human behavior. But through the application of physical coercion, through the appeal of ideologies, uh, through the manipulation of man's physical and social environment, and more recently through the uh, techniques, the cruder techniques of psychological conditioning. All revolutions have essentially aimed at changing uh, the environment in order to change the individual. If somebody wants to build a coal power plant, they can. It's just that it will bankrupt them because they're going to be charged a huge sum for all that uh, greenhouse gas that's being emitted. Sooner or later, you have to bring in an element of persuasion, an element of, of getting people to consent to what is happening to them. If we are in process of developing a whole series of techniques which uh, will enable the controlling oligarchy to get people actually to love their servitude. Uh, to all the young people who are here, I want you to, to know what I'm going to be asking for. I'm going to be asking for all of you to serve this country. To love their servitude. Serve in the military. People can be made to enjoy a state of affairs which they ought not to enjoy. Serve in the Peace Corps. Serve in the homeless shelter. The enjoyment of servitude. Serve in some capacity for your community. And that there seems to be a general movement uh, in the direction of this kind of ultimate revolution, this, this method of control by which people can be made to enjoy a state of affairs which, by any decent standard, they ought not to enjoy. This, I mean, the enjoyment of, uh, of servitude. You have to, uh, in a sense, it's required of everybody, 18 to 25, three months, because I think anytime somebody serves their country in some capacity, we're going to be stronger for it. The scientific dictatorships of the future, and I think they're going to be scientific dictatorships in many parts of the world, but if you can uh, get people to consent to the state of affairs in which they are living, the state of servitude. And Barack Obama will require you to work. If you can do this, you are likely to have a much more stable, a much more lasting society, a much more easily controllable society than you would if you were relying wholly on clubs and firing squads and concentration camps. The Obama transition team is trying to figure out how to harness this support. Some think there is potential to convert political support into social activism, part of an army waiting for new orders. In the recent history of, of brainwashing, we see that the Pavlovian methods have been applied systematically. I think it's going to bring in an era where the president's connected with an army that do his bidding. A very large army of totally devoted people has been created. But the question now is, what to do with this young, eager, energetic army? We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well funded. But then we come to the consideration of other techniques for uh, inducing consent. A light will shine down. You will experience an epiphany. Uh, first of all, there are the methods connected with straight suggestion and hypnosis. You will say to yourself, I have to vote for Barack. The human populations can be categorized according to their suggestibility. This is a matter of enormous political importance. For example, any demagogue who is able to get hold of a, a large number of these 20% and to organize them is really in a position to overthrow any government in any country. Part of an army waiting for new orders. What's required is a new declaration of independence. Not just in our nation, but in our own lives. Independence from ideology and small thinking. Independence from ideology and small thinking. There is a real 
difference between ourselves and, say, the inquisitors of the 16th century. We know much more precisely what we are doing. I mean, what might happen if, uh, if these fantastically powerful techniques uh, were used by unscrupulous uh, people in authority? Contrary to the rumors that you've heard, I was not born in a manger. What sort of society would we get? That's the reason I launched my campaign for the presidency nearly two years ago.